Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to part two of the Photoshop 7 Overworld Map Project. I am RPG Map Maker, and uh, previously we kind of did a mountain range and did a, a lowland region, a highland region, and threw a little bit of textured grass on here. Uh, I'm going to start off with uh, this trees layer that I've got. In the settings, uh, I've got a drop shadow that's a uh, color burn and uh, the lighting is set uh, a little bit different than the mountains it's coming at a different angle and uh, the bevel and emboss is uh, also different in that it's an inner bevel with a chisel hard and the depth is set uh, 171 for this but uh, again you'll have to play around with these if you change the size of your map elements to where you want larger trees or smaller trees or something like that although it doesn't get much smaller as uh, each tree is one pixel uh, a dot but uh, you can look over these settings I've also changed the highlight mode color to an orange color to kind of add uh, an orangish tint to uh, the otherwise green trees and uh, I think I'll just throw some down in here to kind of get us started and show us a, uh, a little bit of trees and again all of these mapping elements are designed to to just be paintable to where you can just kind of draw them on I'll maybe add some trees up here, put a little forest and you can just kind of swirl these on and uh, just like I do with the mountains it's a single click and drag to sort of fill in the basic shape and then I might uh, do some single clicking sort of add some odds and end trees just kind of around the edge to give you the idea that the forest kind of tapers off. And you'll again have to play with this and kind of see what works for you and what doesn't. Now on brown they do look sort of dead like a dying forest but uh, on grass they do look very vibrant and green because there's that uh, green texture behind it so keep in mind that the trees kind of also adapt just a little bit to whatever color is behind them And uh, one other thing that I've started doing is I blur this layer with just like a point three or four uh, Gaussian blur to uh, obviously that's way too much uh, bring it down in like I said about point three, point four. I'm not sure if that's going to show up on the YouTube video, but uh, there's the sharp trees and then there's the slightly blurred. And that gives you the, uh, the illusion that we're really far up looking down on this overworld. Uh, the brush that I'm using for uh, the trees is one single dot that has got some scattering on it. And uh, it has a back end foreground background uh, jitter that allows the uh, the dark and light greens to sort of mesh on top of each other uh, to where they, they sort of spread out like that but if you blow it up a bit bigger you see that they just kind of go on as a dotsy pattern um, you can uh, you can throw them on thicker with say uh, a two wide pixel see how they're a lot larger than the other trees and then go back in with the uh, the one pixel brush and sort of uh, fill in around it to give the illusion that they are small trees and that that's just filled in color and that kind of has worked for me also and again if you don't like something that you've done you can, you can go ahead and take a the eraser tool and just kind of go in there and, and edit what you've been working on and that goes for all of the layers let's uh, take for instance these mountains if I want to cut like a canyon uh, in between these mountains just get you a nice little small eraser tool and go ahead and cut in a canyon right into this low region and then I'm going to blur that back down kind of bring this through the mountains so that this low region sort of 
continues through that little canyon. Go back to my mountain brush and dirty up this uh, edge of the mountains. Something along those lines. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, that's going to lead me into uh, the river layer. The river layer is pretty much just a, a tiny bit of a bevel and an emboss uh, with some lighting effects. Uh, inner bevel smooth, kind of a medium amount of depth, and uh, a color layer that just makes it blue. But you can kind of play with these settings, and it's not completely necessary that it has a bevel and emboss on it, but uh, I find that it kind of works for me. Uh, I'll go to my river brush, and uh, you can just kind of start off your map and bring this in through and uh, the bevel and emboss mostly for this just kinda gives me like a hard edge I'm gonna drop this off into maybe like a lake go up in my brush size and sort of color that lake in and uh, I generally blur this layer I've also got the uh, the opacity of the layer itself set to 80 so that it integrates in kind of with the texture of uh, what's going on around it but that gives you kind of this riverish area keep in mind that on the cartographer's guild website uh, if you play with the rivers on your map you're gonna need to uh, make sure that they always flow downhill into lower regions rather than uh, say a river coming off of this and then going up into this uh, range over here which I guess uh, water could be coming down from there but uh, just be careful uh, while you're making your rivers to uh, design them properly. Now let's go ahead and add uh, some snow to the tops of these mountains. I've got a snow brush there's nothing uh, really remarkable about the snow brush it's just a sort of a tool preset that I use to get me this nice fine granular tiny line I just kind of make a star pattern along the uh, the ridges of the mountain, and just select uh, whatever your tallest mountains are. Don't don't do every single mountain, because that'll look kind of silly. Uh, go back over to your smudge tool, and I've got a snow smudge brush, which is just a whole lot smaller uh, that I'll use to kind of give the uh, illusion that uh, the snow is falling down the uh, slopes of this mountain. And that. Uh, that about does it first snow. But you just kind of smear it around so that it looks nice and gives you the effect that you're looking for. Now some of the other things you can do to dirty up the mountains is go to your highland region, select one of your uh, your dirt brushes, kind of throw some dirt right on top of these mountains and then smudge it with your, your high-low smudge brush. Now again all of these tools are sort of included with the uh, the PSD file and uh, the tool presets that I've, I've given you guys but uh, you'll see that that kind of just adds a little bit of grunge to the mountains. If I turn this layer off the mountains are very sharp and clean. Turn it back on and they've just got a little bit of grunge on them. You can do that two or three times or even more if you want to kind of grunge up the land around it uh, to get this uh, integration with the, uh, the land features that uh, that you've got around it because uh, these map elements are mostly worthless by themselves but uh, taking the time to kinda integrate them in together will make all the difference so that your map starts coming together uh, one other thing to mention is that, that this grass layer is kind of my base color layer for grass and uh, I change the opacity of this brush uh, all the time to give me uh, maybe a lighter grass than I have somewhere else or or whatnot to kind of bring things together and then again I generally blur layers and, and tweak them with different settings um, so that eventually it kind of comes together into something that's usable as a map. Um, I may or may not do any more tutorials on this but uh, like I said the PSD file is available on the Cartographer's Guild website and I hope that uh, you enjoy working with this resource.